Today at Manchester Theatres, we are here at the Altrincham Garrick Playhouse, a thriving and bustling venue in the heart of Altrincham. It boasts two theatre spaces, this beautiful, gorgeous theatre we're in now, and a studio space. And it means that they're able to put on lots and lots of varied different styles of shows, from in-house productions to people who come and visit as well, as well as some famous faces along the way as well. And today we are here with Sarah Riley, who is the operations manager and Joe Megan who is the artistic director. It is a real hub of a community place and we're very excited to hear all about it. Now we can't kind of ignore Chitty <laughs> too much but we are going to come back to Chitty in a minute so thank you both for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about the history about the here and now and maybe what you hope for the future of the venue as well. well yeah we're, well we've been here for a hundred and 110 Ten years, years um, yeah. the, this Christmas actually is the is the 110th anniversary of the very first meeting where a collection of actors and writers and directors got together in a cellar in a local Altrincham business and said right let, let's sort of create a, a theatre company in Altrincham but the theatre itself has been here since the early 30s um, and yeah as you said there's a there's a kind of huge amount of history that's gone before us and Sarah and I are really passionate about the heritage of, of not just the theatre but of the community of, of Altrincham as well um, and I think the theatre in many ways is a, is a totally different beast than what it used to be but we always try and, and keep connected to that historic oh, route. It's so exciting to think who has tread the boards here yeah. over the past century and what this place must have seen and been through. And the plays and things, you know, the, the, the productions that we've done in the past, I mean, we were one of the first um, companies in the UK to do uh, the History Boys after the mm -hmm. National Theatre, you know, so along the way there's these little snippets of, that even, even now, as Sarah and I have been here for um, three and five years, yeah. And, uh, you, you know, we still find out things today and we go, what happened here? <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing, really. And um, obviously, during our time, we've managed to have some milestones. We were the first um, northern um, theatre to do Disney's Little Mermaid. We were one of the first to do Chitty Chitty Bam Bam. We've recently just had a production of The Shawshank Redemption, yes. which again, we were one of the first um, after the, the recent UK tour that was on, obviously, the Lowry. Um, so, it, it, there's been some quite yeah. exciting things actually happening in the so recent years. The theater, Absolutely, yeah. and especially, you know, as I'm sure every arts venue in the, in the country, probably the world, has the same conversation that the post-COVID uh, yes. time, you know, and Sarah and I were coming into these new roles and trying to kind of redefine what the theatre meant to the community and what what theatre in general meant now, mm. um, you know, and, and actually it, what's been lovely is to be part of this kind of evolving journey for the theatre. Um, and it's lovely to see the theatre thriving and, and, and busy at the minute, which is great. And obviously we've got Chitty Bang Bang On, which you have <laughs> directed, uh -huh, Joe, yes. haven't you? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to come to Chitty in a moment, sure. but just I want to delve a little bit more into both of your roles. So you're the artistic director. We know that involves directing, mm -hmm. um, but if you could let us know kind of what else, and obviously operations manager, because between you, you basically kind of oversee everything here, don't you? So tell us a little bit about your working roles. Yeah, we're very much a team, yeah. um, and uh, there aren't that many staff on the ground. We, we, we're very lucky to have um, lots of volunteers, lots of dedicated volunteers, but Joe and I are um, uh, the management team. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we do a lot, we, we split 50-50 a lot of the roles that Definitely, we do, don't yeah. we? Yeah. So I tend to deal with things like the, um, the box office, mm -hmm. HR, um, payroll, um, we both do marketing together, yeah, we don't yeah. both do all the social media together, um, I programme the events, Joe has a ca him and his casting team choose the events, but we, we do work as a team with a lot of the things that we do. Um, Absolutely, and, and recently we've, we've tried to do a lot more with kind of outreach and connecting to the community yeah. because uh, something that's very passionate to kind of where we're at at the minute is that we are the Altrincham Garrett Playhouse, mm -hmm. you know, we're the, we're the Garrett Playhouse of Altrincham and yes. we really are trying to connect that. But yeah, Sarah's quite right. I mean, in sort of my day-to-day -day role, I'm sort of planning for the next season and that can sometimes involve just an awful lot of reading and a lot of, <laughs> leave me alone, I'm just trying to read some plays and get a feel for what we're doing and just keeping an eye on what the landscape of 
I guess the area, but also um, the theatre generally is. Um, and then we're always trying to look to push the, the boundaries of, of what we do as well. And um, we've been really lucky that we've had some great, successful, visual, exciting productions. What that kind of means is once you've gone there, there's then an expectation <laughs> yeah. to do it again. <laughs> to go, right, better. okay, what do we do now <laughs> once we've done Chitty Chitty Bam Bam? Yeah. Okay, you know, and that kind of thing. But yeah, um, we, we do very much work as a, a team. And and that can evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, something can come in, so a, a business or a, a theatre company can, can get in touch with us and all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, yeah, we'll try and look at producing that. We've not done anything like that before. And um, very recently we had... Um, Sarah Milliken here doing tryouts for her upcoming tour yeah. and that was a new entity for us to kind of have that you know um, early working script in hand type stuff in the studio and that was amazing that opened up a whole new range of possibilities for us really. But not only theatre there's so much more to the Garrick we have our own choir we have um, a youth academy of over 150 children wow. Um, we have the Garrick Ensemble, which is a group of 18 to 30 uh, young aspiring actors. Um, we have play readings uh, once a month on a Friday. We, do, we, we reach out to schools and we're trying to do a lot of tours and things like that so the community can see what a wonderful space we have here. So you've also got um, two Christmas shows coming up. So you've yes. got a Christmas Carol and Sleeping Beauty, the Garrick Pantomime, which couldn't be more different, right? No, exactly. And is this utilising your two um, spaces that we've spoken about? Funnily enough, they're both actually on in, oh, in here. Okay. They're both on in the main auditorium. Christmas Carol is on towards the end of November and then it's kind of all, right. all steam ahead for, for Panto. Um, in the studio at the moment, what we're, what we're doing is we're theming the seasons in there. Okay. So all the plays talk to one another via a, a kind of shared theme. Um, so la last year, all the players were connected by LGBTQ plus themes. This year, it's all female playwrights, all female actors, all female directors. Um, so that, that's kind of the work that the studio is, is taking on at the moment. So Christmas Carol is, is the new adaptation by Mark Gatiss that was done at Nottingham yes. a couple of years ago. Um, so that's on towards the end of November. Um, Barry Purvis is directing it. And that is going to be a really visual, exciting story. And it goes... It, sort of goes back to the darker origins of the book mm. as well, which what we found is really exciting for schools and college, anyone studying it, yeah. because it, it really is kind of the root material. Um, I was devastated to find that there were no Muppets in the version, <laughs> obviously, but other than that. Uh, and then, yeah, then we're straight into uh, to Sleeping Beauty, which um, the Garrett pantomime has become a little bit of a staple of the mm -hmm. community, which is lovely, and we get people who... You know, every time they visit us, they say, oh, this is my 10th panto Aww. here and everything. So we always try and pull out all the stops that we can with panto. Obviously, you do brilliant in-house shows and then you do take on other companies who come in as well. So how um, how does that work? Is it something that you would go out and actively source or are you approached? So, a bit of both, really, yeah. 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 Um, I'm quite fortunate now, especially now I've been here for a little while, that I, there's a couple of producers that I work really closely with. So we take a few of their mm -hmm. shows almost on an annually mm -hmm. basis uh, and some of them are, are kind of bestsellers and audience favourites so as soon as as soon as one show it, uh, has opened we're able to say oh and they're coming back next year yeah. and that kind of thing um, and we have Manford that comes three times a yeah, year that's yeah. Yeah. a seat filler isn't it yeah that's absolutely really well. um, and it's a, there's a great atmosphere whenever Manford's yeah. in yeah. and we work really well with them um, so what I've started to do recently is with the producers that I work closely with is kind of say, you know, what have you got in the pipeline, what's mm. coming up? and Or they throw ideas off us, which is quite nice. But also people do just, just get in touch mm -hmm. sometimes. I think one of the, the one of the trickier things here is that we plan so far in advance just yes. be, because the way um, we're set up, we kind of have to. So sometimes we'll, we'll get a, a last minute offering that we think, oh, I would have loved to have done that, yeah. but we just can't fit it in. Yeah. Because um, we plan what, eight, at least 18 months in advance yeah. and then towards the end of the summer we have a lot of schools in here, mm. um, a lot of other local groups, um, a lot of dance schools yeah. as well. So we do do a lot of the community based um, shows at the end of yeah. uh, sort of June, July when the schools are getting ready to break mm. up and that's always very nice. We work with um, Trafford, a local Trafford uh, music <coughs> school, uh, Trafford Music Services. 
and uh, we get a lot of the primary schools in here and they're lovely. Yeah. They're lovely to hear. Oh. Well, anything that welcomes um, the next generation in, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. Um, I must talk to you, you kind of touched on it a little bit about the community and family feel that is the Altrincham Garrick Playhouse. Um, it, you've, you've got volunteers and unpaid workers who not just come along um, because they love theatre, but they're doing skilled work, aren't they? Oh, I yeah, mean, totally. This yeah. entire car, like you said, the costumes and everything else, the lights, the sound. I even saw that you're advertising for a new prop person. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, what a team have you got here? Tell, tell us about them. We're just very, we're incredibly lucky. Yeah. We've, got a, we've got a real core of dedicated volunteers that are in here day in, day out. And even when, you know, a show is as big as Chitty and everyone has been a little bit kind of wide-eyed, you know, and what we still have is a, is a great sense of togetherness, mm -hmm, yeah. the team here, you know, and occasionally I might go into a meeting and say, so I've got this idea of doing Chitty, <laughs> Chitty Bang Bang, and then, kind of go quiet <laughs> but then very quickly it's like oh, yeah okay yeah well, how do we do that then in fact joe came to me and he said sarah when can when do you think i should tell them about the wizard of oz yeah. <laughs> should i tell them halfway through the book or shall i tell them just before or do you think they're going to all run away yeah. <laughs> they were quite yeah. overwhelmed yeah. literally as chitty yeah. was being loaded in so you know we're doing the wizard of oz next year yeah. what <laughs> Yeah, you know, but what but we, we got it on sale quick so nobody could. Oh, that's yeah. it. <laughs> that's about the trick. It's out there now. <laughs> them, yeah. But no, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're great, and I'm constantly, constantly bowled over by the dedication of the, the volunteers and the team that we have here. And as you say, it's really skilled work, and you know, in other places that I've, I've, I've worked and everything, you know, I mean, I've, all, I've been very fortunate, I've always had great teams around me, but here there is just this added extra sense of passion and going that extra mile to do everything and and, and this sort of passing on of knowledge yeah. as well you know whenever someone new comes to us and there's someone who who has you know worked here for a while and they'll they'll really listen to the new ideas and then also show them a kind of a little bit of the history mm -hmm. side of how they've done things and and we do we, we've managed to really kind of create something that i think that's really special but on the flip side we have the core of daily volunteers don't we that are here all the time yes. the team the, 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 yeah. the you know they rub, the garret runs through their blood but on the flip side we also have um, volunteers that can dip in and dip out depending mm. on because everybody's busy yeah but they it's nice to have a hobby so that works well with for example our front of house volunteers so we have again we have a core team of front of house yeah. but we also have um, students that come in, um, maybe doing the Duke of Edinburgh so they can get some work experience or we'll have people that say oh we can only commit once a month but we enjoy being here mm -hmm. and so that's, that's quite good isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, um, yeah, yeah. So each department lends itself to a different type yeah. of volunteer. There is something for everyone to get involved in here no matter what their school skill set is. Yeah and, and you know that's something for everyone, that's something that we use all the time really, mm -hmm. which I know is not a kind of new ideology by any stretch, but it's really important to us that, you know, you mentioned about the family community feel, and, and that is the heart of it all really, but then there are productions that, you know, are tailored to a more specific audience, and, and it's the same with the people that work on them really, you know, we, we've kind of got used to knowing which set designers speak really well with certain genres yeah. and that kind of thing, and um, the, the, in fact, Barry, who is directing Christmas Carol, is our head of design. So once the season's in place, Barry and I sit down and I kind of say, right, well, these are the shows we're doing, these are who, you know, signed on to direct it. We now need to marry them up with appropriate designers. And that's always a really exciting part of the process. It's testament to the, the, the I can almost say the feeling, the vibe of, of the place. Just even, sit, it probably sounds cheesy, but just even sitting here now, you feel it. You feel that warmth. Um, and it's also something that you've got in place for people to come along, um, is the Friends of the Garrick. Yes, um, yeah, So yeah, tell yeah. us about that scheme. Well, uh, Friends of the Garrick, it, it, it's kind of born, at, again, out of our history, really. We were a members theatre, are a members theatre traditionally, and then... Um, what that kind of means is that there's a loyalty connected to to the theatre um, and so we wanted to honour that but we wanted to make it feel a little more personal and mm. um, so Friends of the Garrick is basically um, for an annual subscription um, uh, uh, which I think is very competitive, very competitive. Uh, you know you, you're, you're then able to get discounted tickets to all our home produced shows and actually 
a lot of the visiting shows on a honor that discount as well and that's sort of one of the things that we always discuss so it's just a way of you know hopefully people come and they might really want to see chitty and they might really want to see a christmas carol but they might be something that they're they, they fancy but they're less sure of or you know money's tight and that kind of thing um, and so being a friend of the theater allows you to kind of access a show at a discounted rate and then you're, you're potentially trying something out that ordinarily you might have thought well i can't really afford that and i don't know much about it so i'll I'll that also that. lent itself to um, our cinemas as well. We have a large screen yes, that fills the stage yes. um, and we do National Theatre Live, yeah. which has gone down incredibly yeah. well here. Um, but we have three types of membership. We have a gold membership, uh, which is only £30 a year, and that allows you unlimited membership tickets uh, to any in-house production. Also, like Joe said, a lot of the visiting shows. So you can bring your friends along. Yeah. You can um, offer it out to your staff members. Um, a lot of businesses yeah, buy into yeah, the gold yeah. membership. Yeah. Um, and then we have silver membership, which is only £20 annually, um, and that allows two member tickets. And then we're trying to encourage a younger audience as well. So we've also brought in a 25U ticket, which is a free membership, um, but anyone under 25 can get a member price ticket as well. Wow. So uh, it's just a way of reaching out to people that may not necessarily been involved in theatre before or have less disposable money uh, and trying to get a younger audience in as well. Now I believe that you have um, another branch going on here of things that you can do in hiring out your theatrical props and your theatrical things so tell us a little bit more about that. Um, well that's a relatively new and well, I say that but it's probably been about 18 months yeah, it actually has, hasn't yes. it? Time just but flies it isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah so I mean be, because we're, we've got our own building and uh, we're on this fantastic site, there are lots of kind of out rooms and um, containers and uh, various things that of props, furniture, costumes that we've accumulated over the years. Um, and so we kind of felt that, well, why don't we share these out a bit? You know, so um, we were getting a lot of inquiries about, do you have this or do you have that? And we we just decided to kind of open that branch of the business a little more. Um, so we now hire to theatre companies, uh, do quite a lot of TV and film. Sarah heads up uh, an awful lot of, of that work. And um, we also have quite a unique range of theatrical weaponry. So um, that, and obviously that's quite difficult mm -hmm. to maintain mm -hmm. and look after. And we, we have a member of staff that, that's able to do that. So it mean, I mean, um, earlier this year, we produced Shakespeare in Love. So we were mm -hmm. able to do all the huge fight sequences in, in, in that and then um, we had the stage combat weaponry available. In fact, there's quite a lot of weaponry in Chitty. There is quite a lot of weaponry in Chitty as well, actually. Yeah, there, there is, yeah. So it's, it's opened up a world of yeah. possibilities yeah. for us. Um, but it also means that, um, you know, if, if there are other theatre companies producing, if not similar things, you know, and schools and colleges, you know, yeah. with, with the schools version of Les Miserables and things like mm. that, we've, we've been able to kind of hire out weaponry for the barricade sequences and, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that's been quite an exciting and, and different yes. adventure. <laughs> I never thought we'd have a gun license. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you need it in the theatre yeah. world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so just to finish, um, we we must talk about GAPA, so the Garrick um, Academy of Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a really strong and thriving um, company with and different ages as well, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so we take children from the age of 5 to 18, um, and last year we were particularly proud because um, our youth academy um, were involved with Matilda and that was just yeah. such a fantastic yeah. uh, production. People are still talking about it now. <laughs> People are coming over to the yeah. and saying, oh, Matilda was brilliant. We really, really enjoyed it. Um, and the kids, they were, we were just so proud of them. Well, in, in, as part of the season, they uh, Gap had performed one production on, right. the, on the main wow. stage um, the season and yeah, Sarah's quite right, last year it was Matilda Junior. In fact, one of the Matildas is one of the Jemimas she this week, oh, yeah. which is his yeah. yeah. um, But yeah, that was fantastic. And um, because that was also an anniversary for the current principal mm. team, um, work, working at Gapper, I mean, we, well, you know, just because it was exciting that we were doing Matilda for the, for the students as well, but because there was this real kind of anniversary sense mm. to the production. 20 year anniversary. Yeah, um, we pulled out all the stops yeah. on Matilda, we had this huge um, LED visual wall, didn't we, that, uh, that
that just looked superb. And again, that production sold out, which was yeah, fun. I it mean, did. you know, I'm sure there are many theatres would agree. Not everything sells out. It's nope. a real rarity, you know. <laughs> Um, and Matilda just was, was crazy, but the kids were fantastic. Yeah. Um, the energy was fantastic. You know, I actually stood at the very back of the auditorium because I couldn't get a seat. And, uh, <laughs> it was just, it yeah. was brilliant. It, it was fab. Yeah. And this year they're doing Cinderella, which is going to be completely different. Yeah, yeah. But every child is going to have part, yes. um, whether that be uh, singing, dancing. They may have a couple of lines, but um, it's it's very inclusive, Gapper. Yeah. yeah. And the kids love it. And it, there are really because some of them have been in it since a young age and they've worked all the way up mm. until 18. They're a really close-knit group of kids and yeah, they're, they're lovely. Yeah, and they're really connected to the, the theatre, you know, it's great. I mean, I love it when we're auditioning now and, you know, um, I'll always ask this question, question, have you auditioned here, have you performed here before? Uh, you know, and it's great to hear, well, actually I was a Gapper student, or, yeah. you know, it's just, it's lovely to, to see that the, that connection still continues through. Tell us where we can find you. Um, you've got brilliant, you've got your own car park and you've got a brilliant access to the Metrolink as well, haven't you? We have, yes, we've got 80 free car parking spaces, which you don't find in the centre of Manchester. No. So uh, <laughs> uh, we're very lucky to be able to um, uh, allocate those to our guests. Um, but also, once those spaces are full, because our main auditorium is over 400 seats, once those spaces are full, um, we have neighbouring um, places you can park after six o'clock. We're also very close to Altingham uh, train and tram station and navigation tram station. And we have great bus links in and out of Altingham as well. Seven minute walk into Altingham yeah. town centre. So we're on we're on the doorstep. Yeah, we're, we're, we're lucky because Altringham is really quite well yeah. connected, mm -hmm. and, and we're kind of on the on the main road that leads into. In fact, there's a bus stop literally outside the yeah. theatre, isn't there? Which is is great. So yeah, we're, we're we're quite well linked up, which is great. Yeah, thank you both for your time, which oh, I you. know you're in a really busy period, so we really appreciate it. Um, but for making us so welcome and for everything that you're doing in Altrincham with thank the you. Garrick. Our it's a absolute pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been brilliant. Here. Come along to the <laughs> Garrick in Altrincham. Um, there is so much going on here. You will not be disappointed, I promise. And look at you, Tim, <laughs> come on. Thank you, thank you very no, much. Thank you, cheers.